When you work with a collection of pages, such as this list of projects here, and the list gets longer and longer, at some point you need to break it down and into multiple pages. So you need to paginate it. And I want to show you in this video how this is done in Kirby. So let's head over to the editor and into our projects template here, where we used the page children method to go through all the subpages of the projects page and take only the listed ones and then build this nice grid of projects. So we somehow need to break this list down into yeah, a smaller number of items. For example, in this case, we want to break it down into three items per page. And we can use the paginate method that Kirby provides. Um, and it can be chained in the same way that we chained the listed method. So now we can decide how many items are shown per page. And this can be anything like 10 or 20, whatever. And as I said, I want to show three items per page. I don't have that many items so far, so starting with a low number is a good way to debug this, even if your list is not that long yet. So by doing this and going back to the browser and reloading this, um, our list is now cut down to three items. This is great. And now we can jump to the page two with the URL parameter page. And this will give us the next list of items, so the next three items in this collection. But of course, navigating via URL is really not the what, what we want to provide to our visitors, right? So we want to create a nice little um, pagination navigation down here with arrows, how you would normally do it. And this can be done in our template, probably directly below the, the list in this case. So what we want to build as HTML is a little nav element. And then within the nav element, we want to create a, an, an A element for the previous page and an A element for the next page. So we are going to use simple um, yeah, simple text arrows for this. So a, next, uh, a left arrow and a right arrow. Of course, you probably want to replace this with SVG icons in the end, or maybe you have some other ideas. Maybe you want to put like real text in there and say next page, previous page, whatever you do. In my case, I want to put um, nice area labels onto it, previous page. And then we do the same for the next one because the arrow is really not that descriptive. So now we have our dummy HTML in place. And now we somehow need to get the link to the previous page and to the next page. And Kirby has, um, as soon as you use the paginate method, Kirby adds a pagination object to the collection. And you can use that pagination object to get all sorts of information about yeah, how to create this pagination, how to navigate to the next page, how to navigate to the previous page. And normally you could now do something like this and say, okay, we put the collection into a new variable, into a projects variable. And by doing this, we could, for example, use projects, the projects variable, take the pagination object from that, and then go to the pref page URL. So this is how you would do it. So now we have the link to our previous page and we have the link to our next page. And let's check out if this works. So let's re reload the page here. So we have our arrows down here. They look like crap. I get to that in a second, but we can jump around to page two and to page one. Um, yeah, so it works. So pagination already works but it's not really perfect this way. So we already start repeating those long chains with the pagination object, reusing that twice, and we can make that a bit nicer. So let's put that into its own block and define a few variables here. So we create a separate PHP block, and then we take this entire line here and put it up here. So we define our projects variable before we use it. And from there, we can now create another variable for the pagination object. 
So this takes the pagination object from the project, creates a new variable for it, and now we can use the pagination variable instead of creating those chains all the time. So we're replacing this, and now it gets a lot shorter and a lot more usable, and it looks a lot cleaner. So this is, this is great. Um, so as you might have seen already, as I navigated around before, um, we have no good way right now to say, okay, this is the last page. So the, the, the arrow is still there. And if I click on it, I just land on the page again. So Kirby realizes, okay, this is the last page. You can't jump any further. Gives you the same link again. But um, this is not really what we want, right? So we want to switch off the arrow when we are on the last page. And we also want to switch off the left arrow when we are on the first page. So let's see how we can do this. Our pagination object comes with two methods that help with this. So we have a has prev page um, method and a has next page method. And we can use those in if clauses and wrap the a element in an if clause and then switch it on and off. So this is exactly what we are going to do now. So has prev page. And then we close the if clause. And then here we use the same thing and replace that with next page. So now we have switched off the A elements when there is no next page or when there's no pref page. Let's see if this works. So yeah, the left arrow disappears on the right page and the right arrow disappears on the right page. So it works as expected. So this is really cool. Let's style this a bit and get a bit more into detail. So to style it, we want to apply a class name and then we can go into our CSS file and create a new CSS rule for it. And what I like to do, well, what I like to use is flex for those pagination objects um, because then I can use justify content space between and that would normally take care of putting the left arrow on the left and the right arrow on the right and just create that space between the two arrows as and yeah, use as much space as needed to put them um, equally on the left and on the right. So this is like a really simple way to lay this out. But it doesn't help us so far because, yeah, well, the other arrow is switched off. So they we only end up with one element. Um, and this is easy to fix. And it's also quite useful to say, okay, we want to still show the arrow even if it's inactive, but then replace it with an inactive element. So in this case, we want to replace it with a span and then style it accordingly. And we can do this by creating an else for our if clause. Let's copy the entire thing here. And then we replace all this with a span. And we reuse this for the next as well and replace it with the right arrow. So now whenever we are on the first page or on the last page, the pref and next page links get replaced by a simple span that we can then style as an inactive element. So let's see how this looks. So now display um, flex has something to put the space between. So now we have two HTML elements and that makes the layout work. And it already looks kind of inactive because we don't have an underline under our span but we have an underline our under uh, link. And we can, of course, put a bit more emphasis on this by going back into our CSS file. And let's just give whatever span we have in there a light color, a light gray color, to show that this is an inactive element. So we now just get the idea that normally there would be a previous page, but now we are on the first one, so it's not there and it looks a lot better. Let's put a bit of a padding on top. So as a final layout thingy, I mean, this is really simplified and you get it. I mean, you probably want to replace this with um, yeah, your own styles, SVG icons, etc. You probably get the idea. Um, so yeah, this is how you can work with the pagination object. 
quite easily to create such arrow navigation. And um, one more thing that we can do is we can make sure that the pagination only appears when it's actually necessary. So for example, if we go if, if we go and change the limit and create a limit of 10, for example, in a collection that has just six items, um, we will end up with, yeah, well, we end up on an arrow page because we are on page two and it no longer exists. But if we go to the first page, you can now see we have two inactive arrows. And yeah, well, it doesn't really hurt, but on the other hand, it's also not really clean. So let's clean this up. We can wrap this entire block here in another if clause. And we can check if the pagination object has any pages at all. So we can see if it makes sense to create it or not, and then just hide the entire pagination block if there are no pages. So this is a lot cleaner when there, are, yeah, when every item fits on the current page and we really don't need it. And we can just switch back the limit and see if it works as expected. So let's get back to three items and then we should have the list again or the pagination again. And here, the, here it is. So it works as expected. And yeah, that's, that's a lot cleaner. When you work with the pagination object, it has a lot more um, to offer. And I really yeah, recommend you to go to the website, go to our docs, to the reference. And then you can find the pagination object here on the left. And you can see all the uh, additional methods that you can use. So you can easily build a list of page links for like a number of pages that you want to provide, similar to what you've seen, as, as what you normally see on Google or something. So you, your visitors can jump directly to a certain page. Um, and there are multiple other um, options here. One more thing that I want to show you that is quite common. Um, I want to show you how to yeah, create a little index where you currently are in this pagination. So what is the current page number? How many pages do exist in this pagination? This is really easy to do. So let's create another span in the middle for a bit of info text. So what we want to show is page x of total as a dummy. Um, and we can replace x with pagination page. So that would give, give us the current page number. And we can replace the total with pagination pages. So quite easy to read, page of pages. And when we reload this, we get page one of two. So this is exactly what I wanted to implement. Now we are on page two, page two of two. So it works really well. Um, one last thing that you probably want to do if you work a bit more with such kind of um, yeah, variables in, in templates and you want to place them um, in a good way is to reorganize them into controllers. That would be one of the next steps that I probably would recommend. But this is something we are going to speak about in another video. Um, yeah, this is how you create pagination in Kirby, nice and simple, with all the options that are available to you to style it, to extend it, and just have fun with the pagination object. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.